glad that you are here on this holiday weekend. I know many are traveling and are out of town and away, um, but we're glad that you're here. And um, it's funny how God works uh, in our lives. Uh, this week I had, um, was my week to get back into the gym you know, and start back on the healthy path. And uh, so Monday, Blake and I went and uh, went to the gym and lifted some weights and uh, did a little bit of cardio and that kind of thing. Went Tuesday. Hey, man, two days in a row. That was really good. Had my day set for Wednesday. Was going to meet Blake at the gym. And then had lunch with a friend planned. And then I had um, work to do with my sermon and just some other different things uh, at the house. But while I was at the gym on Tuesday, someone told me that a friend of mine's mother had died. And I didn't know, and and the funeral was Wednesday, right at the time, uh, that I was going to meet Blake at the gym. And so I was in this dilemma. It it was easy for me to figure out the dilemma. But um, So on Wednesday, I go to this funeral. And um, it's a funeral of a a lady who's 93 years old. And... uh, She passed away in Perry, and she had lived here for about three years. So 90 of those 93 years had been spent in other places, in Virginia, in Florida, and the last three years she had spent here in Perry. And um, so her son-in-law got up to do the eulogy, and he sort of covered 93 years of life, um, of her life. He covered 93 years of life in five minutes. Five minutes it took him to really cover 93. How how come? Because he just covered the important stuff. Well, then her grandson got up, and he's in his 30s, and so uh, he obviously had known his Nana for 30-plus years, and he shared what um, what, what he will always remember about his Nana, and he shared that in about three minutes. Why? Because he shared what was really important important what really made an impact on his life what he will really remember his grandmother for then the preacher got up and he preached for about 20 minutes not about what he knew about this lady personally but what he knew about this lady eternally and about 20 minutes he preached about that he preached about her home in heaven he preached about her faith in christ why Because to be honest with you, at the very end of the day, that is the most important thing in our lives. And it's funny to me how how we can boil 93 years down to five minutes. And I don't know about you, but a lot of times I live my life in a way with a bunch of trivial things that I think in the end people will remember or in the end will, will, will affect somebody's life or in the end will leave a lasting impression. And the reality is at the end of most of our lives, we will look back and see that we have spent a lot of time spent on things that really, I don't want to say didn't matter, but Really, at the end, they aren't the things that are eulogy. They aren't the things that somebody says at the end of our lives. And we spend a lot of our life searching for that and, and busy with those kinds of things. We're, we're continuing this series about margin. And I really do believe that if, if we will grasp the, the, this margin idea, this idea of margin in our lives, that, that we literally can live in such a way that just by the way we live, others will notice a difference. That, that people will say there's something different about you. There's something different about your family. There's something different about, you know, your family unit and those kinds of things. If we will just grasp this idea of margin, the, the definition that we gave last week was the amount available above what is actually needed. The extra, the reserve. It's the, the extra money that you have at the end of the month after you pay the bills. That's margin. It's the extra time that you have in your day when, when, when your work is done and, and the things you've got to do. It's that extra time that you have. It's that moral gap between sin and righteousness that, that we live with. 
And so if we can live with a life that has margin, I believe that, that people out that will watch us will see us and see a difference in us. Last week I asked many of you to uh, watch uh, session one of Andy Stanley's Take It to the Limit on Right Now Media. And I had several people email me this week that they watched it, they liked it, it was great. And I know that some of you watched it, and I know that some of you didn't watch it. And here's what I know about the ones of you that didn't watch it. Some of you didn't watch it because you said, I'm too busy. In fact, last week when you left here, you had group full intentions of watching that. You were tracking with this margin idea. You were like, I'm, I'm, I need to create some margin in my life. In fact, some of you are living in such a way you know how, how furious and how, how um, fast your life is going and how fast things are moving. You know that you need some margin in your life. And so when you left here last Sunday, you left here with the idea of fully intending on sitting down for about 30 minutes to watch this video session last week. And Monday came, and well, I'll just do it Tuesday. Tuesday came, you were just too busy. Wednesday came, and so today you sit here, and as I'm talking, you're going, oh yeah, I forgot to do that. I was too busy this week to do that. Hint, 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 you may need some margin in your life. And today we're going to talk about the margin of time. The margin of time. Listen to Ephesians chapter 5. We've read these verses last week and you'll hear these verses a lot uh, over the series. But it says, verse 15 says, be, care- uh, excuse me, be careful how you live. See, we have to actually be intentional about how we live our lives. We can't just let it take us. Do not live like fools, but live like those that are wise. And I believe of every person in here today, that at the end of your life, you would want somebody to stand up at your funeral and say they were very wise. They made very wise decisions. You wouldn't want your family or your kids or or your friends to go, man, they were just so foolish in all that they did. So it says, be careful how you live. Do not live like fools, but live like those that are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Do not act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. I was thinking today about that, just that phrase, don't act thoughtlessly. And I was like, what does that mean? And I think so many times, so many of us, uh, we think and we act in a way of short-sightedness. We look in a way of what do I want right now, not thinking of the long-term effects of that. We, we look at the, our lives, we look at our finances, we look at uh, the things that we want to go and get, and we don't think in terms of uh, now, we don't think in terms of now versus later. We just think in terms of now, right? So today we're going to talk about the margin of time. Now, Here's some math for you, if you like math. There are 24 hours in a day. Now, now here's what's really important about time. Time is non-discriminatory. It doesn't matter if you're rich or if you're poor. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. It doesn't matter what culture you came from. All of us, barring death, get 24 hours in a day. It doesn't matter which side of town you live on. It doesn't matter which high school you go to. It doesn't matter what your career path is. 24 hours a day. There's seven days in a week. And again, no one gets six hours. I mean, no one gets six days. No one gets eight days. We all get 24 hours a day. And we all get seven days a week. Over the course of a year, that's 8,760 hours. That's a lot of hours. 8,760 hours. And basically, someone gets to decide how those hours are spent. You may get to decide how those 8,700 hours are spent. Your boss may get to decide how how those 8,700 hours are spent. I'm going to propose to you today, why not let God decide how those 8,700 hours are spent throughout the course of a year. Why not start small and let God decide what the next 24 hours, uh, how to spend the next 24 hours of your life. And today I'm going to sort of help you with that and sort of show you a way to draw that up and make that work for your life. I heard a, a quote this week. It was an awesome quote. It wasn't related to margin. It wasn't related to scripture, but it is an awesome quote from a grandmother. Grandparents are so wise, they always come up with the smartest things to say. And here's what this grandmother said. She says, there are some fights you should, fight, you should not fight even if you win. But there are some fights you should fight even if you lose. 
Think about that. That's one of those you got to write it down, take it home, let it sink in. There are some fights in your life you shouldn't fight even if you would win. And there are some fights in your life you should fight even if you lose. And part of what I want to say to you is I think the, the fight for margin in your life is a fight you should fight. And you may not win every single day, and you may not win every single week, but I believe that over the course of time, if you will fight the fight of margin, if you will strive to live a life that has margin in it and take the steps to do that, that in the long run, in the later part, you will see the benefit of it. Dave Ramsey says this way, live like no one else today so that you can live like no one else later. Now, he uses that quote in reference to money, and he says, basically, he say, live debt-free now so that later you can live like debt free and and get the things that you want where most people will have debt now and later they'll be paying off that debt but it can apply to this concept of time as well that live like no one else today our culture is going to squeeze your margin your culture will never ask less of you your boss your boss doesn't come in too often and just say, you know what, just, just take the day off. I'll do your job today. Tammy, how many classrooms do you have where you work? All right, 28. 28. What if every week you went into one of those teachers' rooms and said, you know what, I got it today, you go on up. Yeah, that, that's it. That's it. You get that little, you get that slanted look. Your your boss, your supervisor, very seldom comes to you and say, "You know what? Let me take that off of you." Most of the time, what our bosses do, the places that we work, they will come to you and go, "Hey, I got this extra thing I need you to do. I need you to work a little later tonight." I need you to go do, I need you to be part of this committee. I need you to be part of this team that we're putting together. I need you. And so our culture is going to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze your margin. That's why you have to fight for it. That's why you can't just aimlessly walk through life and think that margin is going to create itself because it, is, because it isn't. Some of you are in high school, and so you have classes to take, and you have jobs to go to, and you have uh, friends to hang out with, and you have sports to play. And and so you watch, and if you look in the course of a day, and your time gets shrunk down to minutes. You get into college and you think, oh, it'll get better in college. No, it gets worse in college because now you have classes, you have work, you, you have sporting events, you have uh, sororities and fraternities, you have all, and so you get in there and all of a sudden your, your margin shrinks. As adults, you think, oh, it'll get better now that I have a job. No, that's just like the worst. Because now there's somebody dictating to you 40, 50, 60 hours of your week. And so you watch your margin shrink. You think, well, I have kids, it'll get better. No, it gets worse when you have kids. Because they don't always sleep when you want them to sleep. They don't always get up when you want them to get up. They don't always do exactly what you want them to do. Their games aren't always conveniently scheduled so that you can have margin. And so what happens is you get kids and you think, oh, we'll do better now. No, your culture is always going to squeeze the margin in your life. Your culture is always going to ask you to do more. Your society is always going to say, you could do that. A lot of us, well, here's what we do. If we get invited to dinner, you know, we do, we look, we go, hey, I don't have anything on Tuesday night. Yeah, we'll do it. Hey, I I got invited to that. I got invited to go to that game. I got invited to go do that. And so we just fill up our calendar with all sorts of mini events. And before we know it, the week has gone by and, and we're frazzled, we're tired, we're exhausted, we're, we're frustrated, we're, we're whatever. And, and it's all because the culture is squeezing our margin and we have to fight and be purposeful for margin in our lives. So how do we have margin with our time? How do we have margin with our time? There's three things today that I want to lay out for you from the scriptures of how to take your time, that 24 hours a day, however you want to break it down, 24 hours a day, so many hours a week, how many hours throughout the year, and and factor in margin for them. The first one is this, is we need to realize that our days are numbered by God. Now, most of us live in a way that we think our days are numbered by us. 
And most of us live in a way that act like we're going to live forever. But the reality is, God has numbered our days. Job, job, job. Job 14 verse 5 says this, You have decided the length of our lives. You know how many months we will live and we are not given a minute longer. I sort of made my dad mad at Christmas dinner this year. And uh, it wasn't like mad, like angry mad, but it was sort of like one of those where he looks up from his food and just sort of stares at you for a second. Because we were talking about some activity. I don't remember what the activity was flying in an airplane or whatever and my dad was saying you shouldn't do that that's dangerous that was the word he used dangerous and I said hey when it's my time to go it isn't going to matter if I'm jumping out of an airplane or sitting on the toilet when it's my time to go it's my time to go God has numbered our days God has numbered each of our days, and He knows how long our lives will be. We do not know. We don't have any idea, but He knows. And so so we need to recognize that, and we need to live in such a way that recognizes that He has numbered our days. And I'm just going to tell you that over the last several years, and I was thinking this week when when this started to change in my life, and it really was when I started to be a pastor and had to go do more funerals. And you get to see the end of a person's life. And you get to hear some stories and, and find out. And, and what I began to really realize is, is that God has numbered my days. And, and when it is my time to go, it is my time to go. And if that's, you know, if that's at 48 or 88, God has already determined that. God has already designed that. And it'll be my time to go then. And I'll be honest with you when, you, when you get that and when you grasp that, that's really freeing. It's really a sense of freedom to know that God has numbered our days. Listen to what Psalm chapter 90 says. It says, teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. I like how the Living Bible puts it a little bit better. It says, teach us to number our days and recognize how few they are. Then it says, help us spend them as we should. You see, there is a way that we are to live our lives, and there is a way to build margin into our schedule, and there is a way to to have margin in our lives. The second thing we need to do is to remember that keeping your priorities takes planning. Keeping your priorities takes planning. I bet, if I were to ask you right now to write down your top five priorities in your life, the top five priorities in your life, I imagine that most of our list would be fairly similar. Now, if I said write down your top 10 or top 15, that as we got towards the bottom of our list, we may see some different ideas, we may see some different things. But I imagine for most of us today, if I said write down your top five things that are the most important to you in your life today, whether it's a person or a thing or an activity or a hobby, whatever it is, if you write that down today, I think most of us would have fairly similar list. But what happens is when we live a life that doesn't have margin, we see that our priorities, the things that we say are most important, get squeezed out the easiest because taking and keeping priorities takes planning. Matthew 6.33 says this, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. I I would hope that today that, that in that list of priorities, I would hope that God would be in the top five. He really should be number one, but, but I really would hope he would be in the top five of your life. And here it says, seek him first and live righteously And everything else will be added to you. He'll grant you everything that you need. Now most of us have sort of a pushback against that. A lot of us have sort of trouble with that because we think, if I put him first, what will it cost me? If I I give him priority, what will he take away? What will it bump out? What will it strip away from my life? And we don't like that. And that brings us to our third point. And that is this, that we need to surrender our time to the author of our time. Surrender our time to the author of time. Now, many of you have been tracking with me in this margin series. 
And even today, you've been saying, you know what, that's right, I, I need to keep my priorities, my priorities. I need to, to have some margin in my life. I need to be careful how I spend uh, these amount of days. But just now when I said surrender, many of you just sort of pulled back. Because surrender is a scary thing. For us to say, I'm going to surrender to God this part of my life. I'm going to give this part to him, my my time and my priorities. I'm going to give that to him. And a lot of times we pull back because we say, well, what's he going to take away? I I want to look at the flip side of that coin. What possibility could it be that maybe God is trying to do something in your life today, but he can't get through to us because we're so busy maybe our society has squeezed us and maybe we have squeezed god out of our day maybe there's not a time in your day when you when you're either reading his word or you're praying or you're talking to him or letting him talk to you and we're so busy with that 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 when he tries to tell us something he wants to do something for us he wants to guide us in a certain way that we're too busy to listen we're too busy to hear we're too busy to hear what he's trying to communicate to us So a lot of times when we hear the word surrender, we think, oh, what's he going to take away? I want you to think if I were to surrender my time, what does God want to give me? What does God want to tell me? What does God want to show me if I surrender my time to him? Psalm 139 is probably my favorite chapter in the Bible. And verse 16 says this. It says, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day passed. God created time. He created margin. He created us. And he knew us before we were. In fact, can I tell you, before your mom and your dad knew each other, God knew you. In fact, before your grandparents knew each other, God knew you. And in fact, if we want to take the ante up, before Adam and Eve knew each other, God knew you. And he crafted you together. The rest of that chapter says he crafted you together. He knitted you together in your mother's womb. He put you together special and unique. He he has done everything since the beginning of time to craft you into who you are. So why wouldn't we give to him? Our time. Why wouldn't we say, God, here's my time. Here's, here's my margin. God, what do you want to do with me? There's a great illustration that Andy Stanley uses in the, this week's video. And I'm not going to tell you what it is because I really want you to go watch the video uh, this week. But it's a great illustration. But, but what if you just started each day with this simple phrase? God... I give you my day. You know, you roll out of bed. I don't know. Maybe you brush your teeth first. Get your shower first. Whatever you do first when you roll out of bed. And maybe when you were just right there, you you just say, God, I give you my day. That would be a huge step in, in letting God build margin into our lives. I want to encourage you to do three things this week. One, I want to encourage you to read Psalm 139. It's an incredible chapter that really takes you all the way back to before you were even born about how God has watched over you and knit you together and put you together. How he has built in you, how he has been so creative with you. So I want to encourage you to read that. It's only 24 verses. You could read it during your morning business, but you could read it simply quick Psalm 139 I want to encourage you to do that the second thing I want to do is to encourage you to do this calendar exercise you would be surprised how many times when we put things on paper that we finally realize what I was saying is true or what somebody was saying is true and here's how this works it's sort of we've always used the idea with our budget here at the church called zero based budgeting everything's a blank slate And you start by writing down, I'll put eight up here just because there was room, but put down your top five priorities in your life, okay? You know, one, two, three, like I say, top five are probably pretty similar. 
you want to go all the way to 8, go ahead and go to 8. And then there's a daily calendar here from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., 8 p.m., I think. It's got him all shook up. No, I'm just so, so write your priorities down and then fill in your calendar and then begin to look and see how your calendar matches your priorities. Because what a lot, again, if, if we're just sort of going through life, what you'll probably find out is you'll say, this is important to me, but you'll find out your calendar squeezes it out of your life. You'll say, this person is very, very important to me. They're, they're one of my top five priorities. But what you're going to find out is, over the course of the week, that your time with them is just squeezed out. Unless we are intentional about building margin, about the things that are important, about the priorities that we should have, what we will find out is those priorities will slip and slip and slip out of our lives. So I want to encourage you to do that. It's just a simple exercise. You can do it one of two ways. You can do it this afternoon. And you know how some of your week goes. I mean, your job is factored in there. Uh, you know you got some ball games. You know you got some uh, appointments. You know you got some different things to do. You could do it that way, or you could just let it happen as it happens. And, and on Monday, um, this starts on Monday, you just start filling in what you did throughout your day. Either way you want to do it, but the point of the, the, the exercise is this, that to keep your priorities a priority, you're going to have to play in. And you're going to have to build margin in your life for that. You're going to have to have some extra time in your life for those, the, those and those things that are the most important to you. One of the things that gets squeezed out of our lives real simply when we're so busy is we get, it gets squeezed out time to serve God. There's a lot of us, I'm going to say almost all of you, would say, yeah, I want to do something for God. I'd love to serve God. I'd love to help out God. I'd love to be part of that. And then when something comes up here at the church and we offer it as an opportunity, you go, I'm just too busy. I can't help with that. I'm just too tied up. And so that, again, that's part of being purposeful and planning in, in your margin of your life is you build in time that you have to serve God. And so I want to encourage you this week uh, to, to take time to do that calendar exercise. And the third thing is I want you to watch session two of that Take It to the Limit video on Right Now Media. And again, if you weren't here and you don't even know what I'm talking about, if you, if you have Right Now Media, oh, it's on there. If you don't, just write that on your connection card and I'll send you an invite. It's free to you. The church pays the fee. But it's just a Bible study that Andy Stanley's doing about margin. It just sort of helps accentuate what we're doing here on Sundays. But I want to encourage you to watch session two of that. The reality is if all of us just sort of walk through each day, blind, so to speak, that society will take your time. And it, it's easy for them to do. They're very good at it. They'll just add more and more. And, and I had it in my notes and somehow I skipped over it. It was this awesome thing. Let me just see if I can find it. Because you guys need to write this down. Oh, i got to find it. Oh, here it is. Write this down. I don't see anybody writing. I tell you, I, I don't have a lot of original thoughts, right? And not, not many of them are deep. This is a good one. When you're too busy to build reserves into your life, or when you're too busy to build margin into your time, you run and run and run and run and run until you either, get this, you either explode on those around you or you implode on yourself. I'm not for tattooing, but that might be a good one right there. That's, folks, that, that phrase could change your life. Because if we're honest, when our margin gets squeezed and our time gets squeezed, who are the ones we take it out on? The ones that are closest to us. And maybe we're so in control that we don't explode on them, but inside we implode. You have to build margin.
into your life. You have to build margin into your time. You have to plan for your priorities or our society will graciously use all of your hours in a week and leave none for you. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for margin. Lord, I thank you for...